Hello, welcome back to the Off Grid family. Today I'm going to be upgrading my beautiful new 3D printer and there's loads of different um, 3D prints that you can do for this to make it just that little bit more, you know, amazing. Now I have done a full review of this and I absolutely love this machine and these little bits that I can add to it just give it a little bit more usability and it's just it's just a fantastic bit of kit. Um, all of the um, prints I use in this will be um, in the description and uh, there's a, one of the items that you need to buy something else which again will be in the description but I'll talk you through all that as we get on. Uh, before I do any getting on edge, I would like to just thank Darren, my Patreon. Thank you so much for sticking with us and helping throughout all these times. I just super appreciate everything. Anyway, let's get on. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is print out as many of the items as I can all on, you know, the bed, and I will put them as many in order. I know that a lot of YouTubers like to show you each individual item being printed so you can see it all. I'm not that rich and I haven't got enough time in my life to be doing that. So it will all be printed out on a couple of beds, maybe three, I don't know, and then I'll just start putting it all together. Um, but we're gonna start with the poop shoot. So let's go and add some of the bits we need to it. Okay, our first lot of upgrades are done. Round two. Okay, so here is our second full bed of um, upgrades, etc., and you know, better life stuff to add to it. Let's get putting this on the printer. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna work on is the poop chute, and um, I printed this on the bed like that. No supports needed. There is a slight bit of gefuffling going on down here, but honestly, it's not a problem. It's completely underneath. And what this allows is the poop, the bits of filament to come out and around the side, because my 3D printer is up near the wall, so it's easier than putting on this one, for example, which I had to print out just because it looks cute as hell but um, I don't have any use for it. I was being a bit silly. So we need to put some magnets in here and I collect magnets out of old phone cases, out of old um, like tablet cases. You know, the ones that fold over like fake leather ones, stuff like that. Um, it's also in, I found a lot of these in boxes for phones as well, where they have the magnetic lip and stuff. Um, and the price of magnets are so stupid at the moment that um, I feel quite justified in collecting all these. So it means hopefully most of the stuff I magnetised to, to it today, I won't need to pay for. Okay, um, I used my heat gun to just basically press fit these in to the holes because they're not the exact right magnets. They're not stuck in there yet, but it just means that they are literally as tight in there as possible so they literally are right against the um the actual thing now and it means that i've got some two smaller ones for this side where there's two holes uh well two indents but i'll super glue these in now okay all i'm going to do is pop a drop of super glue in here take the um magnet plop it in obviously not get it completely over my thumb like I absolutely always do. 
I'm putting way too much glue in. I, there's nowhere near needing to be this much. Let's go get a tissue. Okay, well that glue setting, I'm gonna go on to the next thing that needs some um, magnets, which is this, um, for this, but I haven't reprinted this in gray yet. Um, I'm not sure I will. Um, it depends if it all looks really good in gray, because I've, I've specifically done it all to match the colors. So I may end up having to, because I'm like that. Now this has four large holes in it and I don't have any magnets of that size. I'm actually gonna stick this across here, I think. And then it's just two magnets, but these are extremely, extremely strong magnets. I think that'll be enough. It's a shame it doesn't fit like that. Yeah. So all I'm gonna do is whop some here. leave that to dry as well now back in a minute right let's get the last two magnets in this and then once that's dry we should be able to put this on too <laughs> I did think whether I should do this one at a time but you know what I'm like Right. Am I still going to go two at a time? Hmm. No, I'm going to be a good boy. I wish I had some kicker that I could use. I've never been able to afford it. I always go to buy it and then it's like, every time I go to look at it, it's a little bit more expensive than the last time. And it's just hard to justify. Or oh, they really wanna have fun together, but I'm not letting them, they stay like that. Right, I'll be back once they're dry. Okay, so here it is. And this is with all the um, magnets all completely um, stuck and dry, etc. So let's put this on and this is a two second job. So whenever you put a new um, filament in or it starts a new job, it cleans itself out and so on. And the poop whoop, down here. Now in the actual setup files, you have this little poop shoot collector. And I think this is awesome. It's a mini Centauri uh, carbon and I just love it. I think it's great. And basically you just unscrew the screws slightly plop it down and it will clip into place. But as mine will be not up against the wall, but close to the wall, I wanted something that would uh, funnel it round so I can sort of collect it out and, you know, rather than just having a huge pile of it that I have then have to reach around. So that's why this one was so good. And literally all you have to do, and that's it done. So, you know, it's not rocket science. It's that easy. Okay, the next thing is purely cosmetic, but I wanted to have all of this looking the same all the way around, like that. So now that and the old poop shoot look the same, and we'll continue to put on nice bits that, you know, just complement the actual overall effect. Okay, with the printer, we get a few tools as well. And um, I've already had to use this to unclog, uh, let me show you. This is actually a very, very sharp acupuncture style needle. And I've had to use it to unclog the 3D printer because I use some old PETG that I've never, ever, ever printed anything out of because it has clogged every single 3D printer I've used it in. And uh, so that's gone in the bin now. We've got some build platform glue stick, which is just basically a print stick. I think, I assume it's the same stuff. 
We have a spare uh, brush for cleaning off the head, which I think is really cool. We have some grease for the 3D printer. And then we have a bunch of tools, um, Allen keys and um, screwdrivers. So, I printed this. All of the links to these are in the um, description and I didn't make any of these. Now the Centauri Carbon comes with loads of different tools and this is the ideal thing for it. So this is as simple as you can imagine. You only have to unscrew two screws. And it will fit on um, and it takes seconds to do. Unfortunately, while I put it back it, when I was printing them all out, I actually dropped it and I've snapped three of the bits off. It's not a major issue, um, but it looked banging when I'd originally printed it out. Oh well, I'm gonna continue to put it on anyway. Okay, although you don't need any extra hardware for any of this stuff apart from one, um, I actually am gonna use a different pair of uh, different screw, just purely because it's just ever so slightly longer and it will just give me that little bit extra um, security. Well, let's use a screwdriver. Where has my electric screwdriver gone? I seem to have lost it. Okay, now let's populate it. Okay, on to the next. Okay, um, I've only had this a few days and I've already started to notice the wear and tear on the actual spool holder and it's starting to rub onto here. And I don't know if you can see that in the, uh, in the camera. There's an actual circle where the spool has been rubbing against. So, to avoid that, we have our little spool holder. Now, this is supposed to use bearings, but um, I can't be bothered with that, and I'm not going to. So all I'm gonna do, normally you'd put your bearings in either side. I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna chuck it in here. I do have some bearings, but I needed to degrease them, and I just couldn't be bothered. Proper lazy day, so, you know, that in there, and look. It still spins, so I don't think there's gonna be a major problem. And, uh, let me try, so in like this and there. I think that will be good enough. Okay, next. While well, with this side, I'm going to actually move this out ever so slightly because when you're feeding the filament in, it's quite close to the actual uh, 3D printer. So I'm just gonna move it out slightly with another 3D print. Okay, this one's a little more complicated than the rest, but that's saying something because it's still not complicated. Press down on the black bit and take the hose out. Unclip the wires. Gently. Turn it till you expose the screw that's under here that you probably can't see. And unscrew and this is the filament sensor okay so like I said this is the more advanced one but this is still crazy easy for what it is right all you need to do again now is take this off unscrew these two means we can have a quick look inside as well if you want Enough, yeah. It's that simple then. The filament goes through here. Do you know what? Let's go get a bit of filament. Okay, so let's show you how this works. This is pretty cool. So the tube, the Bowden tube goes on this side, and this is where your filament comes in. Oh, it goes in through here, or wood if I can get it in, in here. And then look, it literally just pushes that out of the 
that. Is it a Hall Effect sensor on it, or? No, it's, I think it's just a light. Um, oops. I think it just, it's, uh, so it just unlocks something. I think it's probably um, the same thing as you find in a uh, mouse in the scroll wheel. When, you, when it moves out of the way, it knows that there's filament in there. And it comes through. And straight through the Bowden, into the Bowden tube. Or Bowden tube, sorry. How cool is that? Right, so enough faffing. Let's get this back together. Now, we don't need this piece or this piece. Although, obviously, keep them. Um, this is with swapping metal pieces for 3D printed pieces. So just bear that in mind. So this bit goes on here like this. Then... This bit goes on here like this. And this means that once it's connected, this will still move freely. So you can still put your, your filament in with no problems. So this bit on now. I really need to charge this. One screw. Seems that it still has total freedom of movement. Now let's get this connected to the actual machine. It's as simple as this. Put this in, turn it that way, up into there. And then we just screw it back in. And then this back on. No. Still got all that movement, but it's further away from the um, the machine. So it's much easier to fit in. And then Bowden tube back on. Perfect. Okay, this is another banger of an invention. This is so when you are 3D printing, especially at the higher temperatures, you can make sure you're not pumping nasty chemicals out into your workshop or where bedroom or wherever you have your 3D printer. And you have these tiny little HEPA filters and they pop in here like so. And then in like that. And now we connect it to the side of the um, 3D printer. And when you want to change them, you don't have to unclip it from the 3D printer. You just take this out and change it. And these filters are cheap as chips. They cost me 10 pounds for 10, I believe. Okay, so all you need to do for this one is unscrew this screw here. And this middle one here. And then we'll line that up. Tighten it, but not too much. Okay, and then slide that in like this. Done. Okay, and that's how you make a good 3D printer great. All of these things are free to print and I will have all the links in the description. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. See you again soon. Bye for now.